This footage was shot in the cinematic movie mode on the Honor Magic 4 Ultimate Edition, using one of its custom color LUTs designed by a production team in Hollywood, and the results here on the street of China look fantastic. What I have here is the highest form of luxury and technology that most people in the world will never get to use or even see in person. This is the Honor Magic 4 Ultimate Edition, the best of the best of the Honor Magic 4 series, and if you want this, you will have to hand over $1,300 and fly to China where it's on sale. But before you do that, you should probably know that this phone will not run Google Play services even if you want it to. But despite that, this is one of the most impressive phones I've ever used. The camera system is fantastic and is rated number one in the world on DxOMark. Every bit of hardware on the Ultima is top spec. The design and finish is almost perfect and to my surprise, the Magic 4 Ultima is the best performing device I've ever used for mobile gaming. And as you can see, unlike other $1000 plus phones, you actually get a real unboxing experience. From the outside, the fit and finish is the same as last year's Magic 3 Pro Plus, a rock hard ceramic back with a two tone metal finish that feels like you're holding a luxurious tank. I'm pretty sure if somebody shot you, this phone would actually stop the bullet and save your life. It also has one of the highest screen to body ratios on any phone at 93% with the curved screen melting around the sides. The only thing that slightly lets down this nearly perfect build is the buttons, which wiggle a little from side to side when you push them, which does let down a nearly flawless design. Under the hood we have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, 12GB of RAM plus the option to boost that to 16GB in the settings and 512GB of storage as standard. And I don't know how they've done it because this hasn't been advertised as a gaming phone, but this is the smoothest running mobile device I've ever gamed on. Call of Duty flew through all the ultra settings with very high graphics and a 60fps frame rate, and it was the same story on PUBG. The Ultimate uses AI super rendering to keep the display performing at the highest rate with low energy consumption, and you really do feel it when gaming. Super smooth, no lag, no drop frames, and the temperature stays nice and cool whilst everything is performing at the highest graphical settings. But it wasn't until I tried Genshin Impact that I truly made up my mind. I have never played on a phone that hasn't overheated and dropped frames when playing this game on the max settings. If you watched last week's review of the awesome Vivo X80 Pro, it has all the same specs as the Ultimate, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, 12GB of RAM, etc. But when it came to the fight scenes on the max settings, it did start to drop frames and lag. But on the Ultimate, it was just butter smooth. And this was an even more challenging scenario than the X80 Pro in terms of graphical rendering with multiple characters, explosions, fire and longer fighting sessions. The Ultimate was flawless and the temperature stayed under 40 degrees the entire time which none of the other flagships could achieve during gameplay. So all of these things together for me make this the best phone I've ever gamed on, which I don't get to say often. Then we get to the camera system which, as I mentioned before, is the top ranked camera system on DxOMark with the highest score ever. Is this the best camera system ever? No, but it's up there with the best. Firstly, there is actually a lot more detail from the Honor Ultimate thanks to its higher megapixel count, but it's only when you crop in closer that you can really see these details. Secondly, a lot of the time the Ultimate just deals with more difficult lighting better than the iPhone. There is a very HDR look to these shots which I don't mind personally, but they can also look a little faded at times when this effect comes into play. And thirdly, sometimes details on the Ultimate look wobbly and incorrectly stitched together, which is a common trait of Honor phones in general. The ultra wide sensor is 100% the weakest part of the camera system. It feels like there's no stabilization at all on this sensor, or just no attempts to make the images look stable. And it kind of reminds me of a budget phone alongside the iPhone. We have massive amounts of blur and a complete lack of detail in many shots, even in good lighting. 
There is also an incredible amount of warping going on around the edges. This alone makes me wonder how it could have scored so highly on DxO Mark. The telephoto lenses, on the other hand, are very good. Being able to punch in a little closer compared to the iPhone makes a world of difference, and combined with a much higher quality sensor and a more appealing approach to processing makes this an easy win for the Magic 4 Ultimate. I did try some portrait shots which were less impressive on the Ultimate, with details going missing and being replaced with the oversmoothing of skin and facial features which looked a little fake although the processing does make shots stand out more than the iPhone's more natural look. Nighttime at first seemed like an easy win for the Ultimate, with it controlling the bright streetlights of China much better than the iPhone, but overall it was kind of a mixed bag with no clear winner. Sometimes it went really wrong for the iPhone, only for the Ultimate to suffer a similar fate in another situation. I do think shots look more appealing on the Ultimate, and overall it does provide better picture quality than the iPhone, as well as being far more consistent across all of its sensors. In terms of video, there is no 8K shooting mode, which surprised me considering this phone's name, and the footage shot in 4K looked a little dull and colourless. And even though there is a massive laser autofocus sensor on the back, it struggled to keep in focus. Now, the camera cutout on the front is cool because not only can it shoot in full 4K, which nearly every other flagship Android phone can't do, but it can also take super ultra-wide selfies, and the sensor next to it is an actual real 3D Face ID system, not the normal 2D systems we see on most other phones including the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. We also have an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner which works well although I wish they would make the sensor area a little bigger because it feels quite cramped compared to other high-end devices. We also have a pretty nice Quad HD display. The display does not have a subtle curve like on recent Samsung phones, it's pretty dramatic, I haven't had any accidental touches and there is a dynamic mode and a 90Hz option if you want to further save battery. We also have the option to boost the frame rate and video quality in certain video player apps, which is pretty cool. Battery life could definitely be better, we're only looking at a 4600mAh cell which will get you to the end of the day but most likely nothing more. Charging options are great, we have a 100W wired charging system that comes free in the box, 50W wireless charging using Honor's own charging system as well as reverse wireless charging. We also have Magic UI 6 running on Android 12. Honor has given its UI a small facelift in recent months with a new shelf and larger interactive folders and widgets, as well as being able to open a miniature version of Honor apps with a flick of your finger and quickly pin them to your home screen, although this only works on specific apps. There are your standard customization options, but I really think Honor could go a little deeper here in their next iteration of Magic UI. Overall, is this phone worth its price? I would say very nearly. In terms of hardware, almost every component used in this phone is the best version you can have. From the cameras, charging, 3D face unlock, chipset, ultrasonic scanner, display and design materials, the Ultimate is the ultimate expression of what the Honor brand can achieve. It's just a shame that right now it's for the Chinese market only, but perhaps next year if there's enough interest, the Magic 5 Ultimate could come to Europe, Southeast Asia, the Middle East or Africa with a full suite of Google Play services pre-installed. But until then, I hope this video gave you a good taste of what this phone is like. And if you watched this entire video to the end, you are inside the 25% of my viewers that usually finish the video. But most people don't subscribe and doing so would really help me grow this channel a lot quicker and for sure encourage me to make more videos. So a sub and a smash of that like button would be awesome. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.